Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and if you just picked up a new M4 iPad Pro or even maybe an iPad Air, I wanted to go over some settings that you should know. Now, during the initial setup, it will ask you to update your software, but if you decided to skip that part, make sure that you do that first. Go into your settings, go to general, and then software update, and update your software to the latest version. That makes sure that you have all of the features we'll talk about. Now, the first thing that Apple added specifically to the M4 iPad Pro and the new iPad Air is within settings under battery. Under battery, we now have battery health. You'll see it here just like you do on your iPhone. And if we go into battery health, you'll see that it gives you the maximum capacity and cycle count. You also now have the option for an 80% limit. If you're someone that likes to manage your battery and really doesn't need the full battery, but wants to make sure that you extend the battery as long as possible, go ahead and turn that on and it will never charge above 80% unless it actually needs to balance the battery or occasionally charge it to 100%. So you can enable that if you want to, if you don't care about that, of course, just leave it off. But that is something that I would recommend if you want to extend the overall battery life on your device. Now with the iPad, one thing I do right when I pick one up is I go into my settings and then I go to display and brightness. Under display and brightness, we have a bunch of different options. And the first thing I recommend turning off, if you maybe you want the most accurate colors on your display is true tone. Make sure that's off if you're trying to draw and see the exact same colors, because what this does is make background white colors sort of paper white. So sometimes it changes the overall color of the display. And if you want the most accurate colors, whether you're editing a video in Final Cut Pro or maybe you're just creating something in a document and you want to see what white actually looks like and the different colors, make sure that's off. The same is true with night shift. While this can help at night, make sure that while you're maybe creating art or editing a video or something else that you have that disabled as it will change things to a slightly more yellow tone and get rid of that blue light. So make sure that you do that if you're actually creating. Also within our display settings, if we scroll down, you'll see display zoom. This is something you can change to give yourself more space space or just use larger text if you need it. For example, here's the default. If we go back within here, if we want more space, go back, everything will sort of shrink a little bit. If you want larger text, again, go back and things will get a little bit bigger as far as the overall text size. I typically just leave it on default, but that gives you an idea of what things will look like. So adjust that according to what you want most. Another thing you may want to consider is under the same settings display and brightness. Here we have auto lock. Now I always put this on never when I'm recording a video, so it doesn't shut off the display, but this is something I would adjust based on how often you use it. If maybe you're editing a video or you're have not touching the display for a little while and you don't want it to turn off, adjust this maybe to never if you don't want it to turn off, and then you can just lock it like a normal computer if you're using it that way. Otherwise, you can leave it alone, but typically it's something that maybe you're exporting a video, it will sort of lock the screen, maybe through an export, you don't want that to happen. So while you're using that, you may want to disable it. However, I leave it on for security reasons. Now, of course, if you just picked up your first iPad, or maybe you've had one for a while, there's some settings you should know about under settings and then multitasking and gestures. There's a few different things we can do here, and you have the option to control the overall iPad's experience just by using different gestures. Now by default, just pinch and you'll go home. So just pinch your fingers together again and you'll go home. You may have noticed how I swiped back and went right into the settings app again, pinch and go home. Then if we go into maybe applications, swipe back, we'll go right back into it, swipe the other way and we'll go back to what we were just in. So that's something I use all the time. Now there's another gesture you can do though, and enable from the corner. So you'll see here where it says swipe finger from corner. If you enable this, you now have the option to customize which corner does what the bottom left corner will screenshot and the bottom right corner will give you a quick note. You can customize this to a screenshot or off, but if we swipe from the bottom left, we just took a screenshot. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. If we swipe from the right, we get a quick note. So that's something that you can turn on if you'd like to. It's really helpful if you want to take a quick screenshot. Another gesture has to do with the keyboard. This is something that isn't really necessarily a setting, but if you go into Safari and maybe you're not using a magic keyboard, you go to type, but maybe you want to type on it one handed swipe in from the keyboard and you can shrink it down so you can just swipe back out and it will expand the keyboard swipe in and you can shrink the keyboard and then move it wherever you want by pressing and holding on this little line here. Just move it wherever you'd like 
and there you go. Place it wherever you'd like to get it out of the way, and then you can still type things like Apple and then go. So it's a really nice way to get into the keyboard and it will stay shrunk until you expand it back. So it's just something that you may not be familiar with. Now, another thing that you may be familiar with is when you press and hold on an icon, you get some settings for it. Now these settings are great, but it doesn't very much feel like what we used to have with 3d touch. You can make this animation a little bit faster. So it feels like 3d touch in order to do that, go into your settings, go to accessibility, then go to touch, then haptic touch. And under haptic touch, we can change this to fast press and hold on this image. And it feels much more like we have 3d touch, like we used to on iPhones. So now it's just sensing your finger sort of pressing and holding before it actually sensed when you were pushing on the screen as it had pressure sensors, they've since removed that with all the iPhones. But if you turn it to fast, it's much faster. So if we go back into camera, it feels much more responsive and you have all of your different options in all of the different apps. And speaking of keyboard, if we use the magic keyboard, let me bring that in the magic keyboard to me is a must for any iPad pro. If you're regularly going to be typing and sort of navigating the display, not only is it adjustable, but it's a really nice experience despite its expensive price. One thing you need to know about is some of the gestures for it. If we press and hold command on any screen that we're at, it will give us a list of shortcuts available for that specific screen. So I'll press and hold command and you'll see, it says things such as go to home screen or search or switch app show doc. So if we want to show the doc here, we can hold the little globe and press a, and it will show us the doc. Or if we want to go home, press the globe and hit H and we'll go home. If we go into the app store, press and hold command you'll see that the actual menu has shrunk down to give us the specific things for this application that we have shortcuts for on the magic keyboard. So try this out. If you haven't already, it's great just to be able to quickly navigate through different things using keyboard shortcuts. Something I also use all the time in the different demonstrations that I do is the cursor. You can see the cursor here. And if we move around or scroll around, you'll see that it has a blue outline on it. That's not by default. That's something I do so that you can see it a little bit better. If you want to change that, go into your settings, go back to accessibility, then towards the bottom here on the first page, go to pointer control and under pointer control, you'll see that we have different options such as increase contrast. We can adjust the size and we can adjust the color. So if we have a different color, typically it has none adjust this to blue or red or whatever you want. And then you can change the border width. So you'll see here, if I want to change the width, now the width of the border border is much larger. So if we bring it down, it shrinks down again, we can bring that up, change it to red. If we'd like change it to blue. And it's just a little bit easier to see if you want to enable that. Now, if you have one of the latest iPads, there's a feature called stage manager to help you manage or multitask a little bit better. You can enable this by swiping down from the top, right? And then tapping this icon here. That's the stage manager icon. And once we open an application, it will now be in a window. We have the option to resize it using the little handle in the corner. We can press on the three dots and hold and move it around tap on the three dots and it gives you different options to add another window minimize, or you can even tap and switch between different applications on the left. So depending on the application, it may open in the full screen, or if you go into maybe apps here, it will open up windowed and you can resize it as needed. You can also add additional applications. So if I want to just drag something in, press and hold, drag it in. Now it's in the same window with this tap to bring the other window forward. So this is something that's really nice. And there's a couple settings you should know about it. Go into your settings, go to multitasking and gestures, tap on stage manager, and you'll see all of the different options here. One thing you may want to turn off is recent apps and even your dock to save some room. So if we go into Safari, the dock is gone. The side panel is gone and it gives you a little bit more room. You can still swipe in and get that side panel, but when you're using it regularly, you may want the full screen. So you may want to disable those things just to make it a little bit nicer to multitask, just swipe up from the bottom, get your settings. And if you want to keep those on, just re-enable them. So it just makes it a little nicer to use stage manager. Now with the latest iPad, Apple has updated the camera a little bit. Now they've removed the ultra wide camera, but they've updated it with a sensor to help scanning documents and remove things such as shadows or maybe smudges. So if we bring in a little document, this is just the warranty card from the iPad pro. And maybe we go to notes. We can do this directly from notes or just press and hold on notes. And then we can scan a document, tap on scan document. And if we bring this in, we can scan it. It recognizes it. And if you had any shadows, it will snap the flash 
and then we can go directly into that document and it looks perfect. So it no longer has any shadows on it. It may have to redo it. You could do it a couple different times, but it almost looks like you photocopied this as it's faded down here but it looks much better than it did before. And you'll no longer see shadows from different lights and things like that. So give that a try if you haven't already. And it's just an easy way to access it by pressing and holding on notes. Now there is a setting I would recommend that has to do with the camera as well. If we go into settings and then we scroll down, continue to scroll down until you get to camera, go into camera and you'll see the option to record video. If you ever use your camera to record video, I would highly recommend going into this and enabling 4K 30 or 4K 60. You can choose whatever you'd like, but either way, this will give you a higher quality as it defaults to 1080p. So you may want to enable that and you can also change this within the camera itself. Another feature I would enable is lock white balance. This then locks the white balance in the background so that if you're ever taking maybe a video or sort of seeing the background shift while you're taking that video, changing the white color on the background, this will fix that and it will lock to whatever you see first. So if we go into the camera within the camera, we'll just pick this up here. I'll bring in an iPhone just so we have something in the background. And when I start recording video, we can then just keep it this white color in the background, staying the same color we see now. So when you bring a display in front of it, sometimes it changes color. We also can change those settings from earlier just by tapping on the 4k or HD if we want to do that from there. So I would definitely recommend enabling those things. If you want to use the camera regularly for video. Now with the latest iPads, we have support for the latest Apple pencil pro. The pencil pro has some new features with it that I thought we'd go over as far as settings and more. If we go into notes, the first thing is we can now double tap on the side of the pencil that will change the current tool to the eraser. So double tap the side and it changes between the tool. You'll see it down here on the iPad. So as it switches, it also confirms that by shaking the pencil a little bit. Another thing we can do is squeeze the pencil and it will bring up our different tool palette. So squeeze it again, it's confirmed with haptics and then we have our different tools. Just swipe along the tool palette and we can see all of the different pencils or pens that we have. And you'll see this one where I have a fountain pen. One attention to detail that you just don't see from other companies is right here on the shadow on the screen. If you notice that shadow, it actually represents what tool I'm using. So if I switch to the eraser, it represents the eraser just with the shadow. So it lets you see what you're using and what you're actually near so that you can erase something like this. So it's incredible attention to detail. You just don't see elsewhere. There's also a new feature barrel roll. So you can see the line here as I spin the pencil, it spins this little icon here to let us know the orientation. So if I want to write, of course I can write like this, but if I want to turn it, you'll see that I turn the pencil and it changes the overall orientation of the line. So that's something that's really great that they've updated. One other thing you can do here is if we go to shapes, maybe we'll go to this shape and we'll go to triangle. We can draw a triangle like this, but if we want a perfect triangle, we can actually draw a triangle and then hold and it creates that triangle. However we want it. So again, we can do the same with a square or rectangle press and hold at the end or just stop at the end. And it will draw that again, a circle. There we go. And it creates a circle. So that's a nice little feature that's built in. Now there's some settings for this as well. If we go into our settings and then we go down to our pencil or back up to our pencil in this case. So we've got Apple pencil and we have different options here. So we can try scribble and use that if we want to, or we could use pencil gestures like I showed you before from the bottom left or right. So from the left corner screenshot from the right corner, we have the other one. We can disable this specifically for the pencil if we want to. So if you don't like it for the pencil, you can turn that off. There's also customization specifically for the Apple pencil pro with the new squeeze gesture and double tap. If we go into squeeze gesture, you'll see all of the different things you can change it to such as switch between current tool and eraser or show the color palette. So if you want to switch this and change the sensitivity of it, you can do that. There's also some options for the double tap option to change that and customize that similarly. So double tapping the side will actually change tools or between the current tool and eraser. But if you want to turn that off, you can do that.
You also can turn off the haptics of the pencil if you want to do that. That would extend the life of the battery in the pencil typically, but I don't think it's enough that it would make that much of a difference. But if you don't like it and you want to turn it off, you can do that. And I wanted to make you aware of those settings. Something else you can do with Siri is when you use Siri, you can have it automatically send a message if you're using voice dictation to reply to messages. That's something that you can do on an iPhone and you can enable on the iPad also. If we go into our settings, go to Siri and search, and then we go to messaging with Siri. Under that, we have automatically send messages. This could help with accessibility users or just make your life a little bit easier in general. And it says to send a message quickly without Siri asking you to confirm before sending, turn on automatically send message. And then you can also have that same thing happen when connected to headphones or if you're using an iPad with CarPlay. Also, if you are using iMessage, one tip I have for you has to do with iPhone. If we go into our iPhone, within settings on our iPhone, if we scroll down, keep scrolling down until you get to Messages, under Messages, scroll down a little bit further, you'll see Text Message Forwarding. You want to make sure this is enabled for your device. So you'll see I have a bunch of different devices here and I want it enabled for the specific devices I'm using. And what that means is if iMessage isn't available, it will actually forward through your phone using text messaging. So maybe you're speaking to someone using an Android phone or maybe they just don't have iMessage available or they don't use it. You can actually send directly through that. So depending on your device, just turn that on and it will work seamlessly with it. I've had a lot of people tell me they can't send SMS messages through their iPhone iPad, this will fix that problem. So just find your device and then enable it for that specific device. As you can see, I have here. One thing I use all the time on my iPad, if I'm using a magic keyboard, or you can just use it by activating it is spotlight search, pull down from the middle, or you can quickly get into this just by holding command and pressing the space bar. Once you're in that you can search or open any application. So maybe you want to open settings, just type settings, hit enter, or return and you go right into settings. If you want to look for maybe a photo or something else, you can do that. So maybe you want to look for podcasts, you can open podcasts and then it will open the application. You can use this to search for different photos or different information such as 45 C to, or you can change it like that to 113 Fahrenheit. You can do that with speed 40 KPH you'll see is 24.85 miles per hour. It's super helpful and something I use all the time throughout the entire OS. So those are some settings to help you get a little bit better use out of the latest iPad Pro, and many of those will carry across to the new iPad Air or many of the other more recent iPads with the latest version. If you have any other tips or different settings you think other people should know about, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.